How you doing fellas and fillettes? Kamsi's RC here. Brand new channel, trying to get off the ground, but hey, that's just uh, the way of the course. This is the FTX Vantage. Uh, this is actually specifically the brushless edition. Uh, things I can tell you about it on the outside of the box. Uh, that side is French. How about that? That's French. That's British. That's the one we want. Right, so I'll come down and uh, we can see what we got here. Uh, okay. Let me see what we got here. So, uh, try and get it in the studio lights for you. This isn't a particular professional setup, I'm literally just working from home. Okay, so what we got in here? Out of the box, you have. Yeah, let's just focus that in, shall we? Right, so 99% ready to run. I'm presuming that's because you need batteries. Uh, it has a 2.4 GHz radio, pretty standard these days, and a waterproof receiver. That's not so standard. That's actually quite quite good. Uh, got an Etronix 2.1 watt waterproof brushless speed control, so... Okay, so 2.1 watt uh, uh, ESC, basically. Uh, I believe it's a 45 amp unit in here. I uh, can take up to a 3 cell LiPo. Uh, 540 senseless brushless motor is the way I usually like to run. I believe it's a, 25, a 2950 in this thing. For a 110 scale uh, truck, that is going to be a torque monster. Uh, you have a 3250 uh, 2 cell LiPo with a 20C, 20C discharge with it. Uh, it's a hard case as well, so you don't need to worry about smacking it around too much. Obviously, because it's still LiPo, be very careful because they are, those things are bombs. Uh, you've got a pocket power balance charger, a nice little addition uh, to charge the LiPo if you haven't already got a LiPo charger because they are a bit finicky to charge. Uh, don't, do not let them run all the way out. Uh, low profile pre-painted body shell, yeah, I guess, uh, I'd, to be honest, I'd rather have a taller body. Uh, so if I flip it over, it's the body that takes the smack and not the shock towers, but hey, that's alright. Uh, no, I'm not uh, criticising that in the least. Uh, where were we here? Moulded tub chassis. Yeah, it's pretty standard these days. I think Tommy started that trend off. Um, yeah, my battery's running out again, so I'm just going to be changing the battery and I'll be right back with you. Alright, that's a little bit better. Uh, I'm fairly new to this whole YouTube thing. Okay, so what else we have here? Uh, you have a four-wheel drive system with a slipper clutch, that's good. Just so you don't end up uh, stripping out your diffs or whatever. Um, lightweight high-impact arms. I'm assuming that's the suspension arms here as well. Very good. Unique gearbox design for low CG. Not quite sure what that is. Gonna have to look that up. Uh, and then I'll put you put it in a thing for you. So big bore oil field adjustable shocks as standard, which is nice. Yeah, you can see them right there. Uh, front universal drive shafts, uh, gearbox metal and uh, metal crown and pinion gear. Uh, adjustable wheelbase, adjustable turnbuckles, fully adjustable suspension, uh, slipper. Yeah, it's already said the slipper clutch, uh, slipper clutch for drivetrain. Um, the chassis does accept lipo or nine mile batteries. I'm too close. <laughs> Uh, wide range of option parts available. Yes, I will actually get to those because I have picked up uh, all of the hop-ups that you can get for this thing. Uh, reason being is because I just really wanted to deck it out. So we have here in this little box of tricks. So ignore this. This is not for the uh, carnage. All well, the rest of the stuff in here though is. So you have you can get a carbon fiber battery, well, carbon fiber center, center chassis brace. You can, get, uh, you can actually reduce down to a 32 dp should you want to, should you, uh, 32 dp pin, uh, spare and pinion. Uh, obviously, the usual arrangement of aluminium parts, suspension arms, uh, uh, steering, steering, th um, steering arm. Uh, 
CNC billet motor mount. Uh, battery, even a carbon fibre battery holder. <laughs> it depends how serious you want to get into it. The sway bars. Uh, front and rear suspension of the carbon fibre shock towers. Yeah, that's the rear. Uh, the Obviously the usual uh, aluminium turning knuckles and the hexagons and things like that. All right, this is all the uh, just the usual things. That's like the suspension arms that hold them both together, uh, and uh, and of course a wheelie bar, just in case you do want to go to the 32DP and do some sick wheelies. All right, so and obviously you can have all the manu all aluminium shocks. The reason I bought all of these is because why not? Uh, I intend to beat the absolute crap out of this thing, so. Uh, basically that is all there, eventually looking to be upgraded into the future. But I want to run this thing stock first, okay, so we've cut the seal, well, cut it, whatever, taken it off the box. Oh, you like that, huh? This is, as I told you, this is not a professional video, I don't frankly care <laughs> about that of being professional. I'm just a, a guy in his, just a sweaty guy in his bath um, bedroom. A sweaty guy in his bedroom doing this. So it's all right. So we cut the seals. Uh, let me just zoom out for you. This is a very big box. Let's actually get you back on the tripod so you can actually see what I'm doing. That would be something, wouldn't it? Okay, so here you go. Yo, face reveal for whatever, I don't know. What do people do on YouTube these days? I have no idea. It's been so long since I've been on here. Yeah, so... Hey all. It's me. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm in shot, but hey. So right out of the box. Get rid of that. Okay, so it comes pre-packed. Obviously with the instruction manual and the... What looks like the wall charger. And a lipo safe bag. Very, very useful for those looking to get into the brushless two cell side of things. This is actually a very good little kit to get. Very good little car, car to get, actually. Let's open that. Good little car, good little uh, introductory vehicle for the brushless side of things. Get all the equipment that you need. You get a, looks like a wall, a wall adapter, just in case you are not in the US like I am. Uh, so, well, I think if you are using US plugs, which sometimes we do over here, I think we use the French style ones, the Euro style ones. Um, so you can plug in your battery charger in from the UK to Euro, essentially. So that's good. RC bind plug. I've been looking for one of these for ages, so it's good that this one comes with one. Uh, usual array of stickers. They look like they've got pre-cut outs on them, which. Uh, I don't know what they're for. Perhaps this is sharing a model with the um, Carnage. Have I been saying Carnage throughout this entire video? Probably. Anyway, this is the FTX Vantage, just to clear that up. Uh, I do have one, of, uh, one or two of these already, but they are always useful to have. These are LiPo safe bags. Always charge your LiPos within these because the, the <laughs> LiPo batteries are very, very dangerous. Well, they can be. So, and they're much more prone to fires and exploding than Nymai batteries are. They're a bit more finicky, but they do provide a better discharge rate. Uh, this is the warranty. All lipo batteries, so blah blah. Guarantee for 30 days. You don't need to know this. <laughs> and the uh, manual specifically for the Vantage gives you all the breakdown of all parts. Gives you the oh uh, yep yeah, that's another thing there parts list exploded diagram yeah seems pretty simple it gives you a breakdown of all the fastenings that you might need part numbers and so on so very good to review that uh, this is the manual for the I'm presuming the Vantage Carnage and Bugster which are all based on the same chassis just with different bodies so. Either one, everyone, any one of those three will share, share the parts. Uh, operation manual for all three of them. 
fairly simple. I will be reading over this before I boot up my PC. Uh, RC rather, rather than PC. Yeah, I'll be looking over that, so keep all of that. And you've got a French version just in case you're French. Right, on to the car, shall we? Eh? It's been a long time waiting. Hey. Oh, that body looks good though. Oh, let me get it out there. It's one tenth scale, I can literally just do this. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. There's nothing quite like a brand new RC. I mean, look at that. Silica bag, don't eat this. Just in case you uh, were that way inclined, but. Oh. This is one good looking car. It has to be said. Let me zoom out for you so you can have a closer look. There you go. It's not a bad looking machine, eh? It hasn't even got the wing on it yet. I'm assuming that's uh, uh, in the, one of those boxes down there, but... Whoa! It's a good looking little car. And uh, again, it's perfect. It's four wheel drive as well. You can see the spin those front two. And the rear ones are spinning as well. There we go. Underside of it. Don't know why you'd need to know that, but... One thing that I do find kind of strange is that the motor is the only thing that is exposed on the bottom of this thing. Uh, I can appreciate it's probably for airflow, but if you're going to be taking this thing off-road, you know, uh, through the mud and whatever else, and off-roading uh, off and things, the bottom of that is just going to get clattered, isn't it? Anyway, uh, perhaps that's something that I need to uh, uh, think about when I'm running this thing. Perhaps this is more of a street racer. I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is probably the wing in here, it feels very, very light. Uh, no, never mind, it's just a spacer box. Alright, so all the uh, the radio and things like that are probably going to be in here then. So, all the radio and things are probably going to be in here, yeah, there's the radio. That's the wing, yeah. Just goes on with two little uh, nubbins, we'll have a look at it later with the wing on. With the, when uh, we come to running it. Okay, so in that box, very neatly packed, was LiPo balance charger. A basic unit, but I should imagine it would probably work well. Um, yeah, I've already got a, a full balance charger in the other room, so I probably won't be using that. But um, And these very, very simple, sort of Fly Sky style ECX. Um, uh, blacksmith product uh, style uh, controllers. These are, they're very simple and they're very they work very well actually. I've not had too many issues with these, you know. So it's a it's a good way to get into the hobby as well. I'm very I'm actually quite familiar with them. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for the unboxing part of it. Uh, I've got stuff everywhere now. Uh, we'll have a close up of the vehicle once I uh, end up putting it together. Uh, well, I say put it together. This is probably what they meant by 99% ready to run, because let's be honest, for style's sake, you need the wing on on there, so. Okay, one thing I did actually forget, because I'm so new to this, um, let's actually have a look under the thing and see what it looks like under the uh, under the body. So, these two clips back here, I'm going to put the wing on before we do take the body off, just so we can get an idea of what it looks like with the wing on. Uh, if I can actually get these body clips in, because apparently I am bad at this. Which is fine, you know. Oh, see? Nice shiny new plastic, I've got a freaking uh, flaming fingerprint all over it already. Ah, unacceptable. Where's the hole? Ah, come on. Come on, there you go. Right. Wing on. <laughs> Not a bad looking little machine, eh? Now that's one thing to note right out of the box. This uh, body, I don't think, has been trimmed properly. Gonna steer. The uh, the body catches on the steering, so that's one thing to watch. One thing to watch for yours if you do decide to get one of these. Uh, I mean, this thing was fairly cheap, like as brushless go, as brushless cars go, they were. It was fairly cheap. It's a good introductory section. It's a good introductory car to the area, you know. 
Uh, two body clips, front and rear. Just two body clips, one front and rear. Okay. Now that is one very tightly packed RC in there. So this is a Etronics unit, 2.1 watts. I think that works out to about 45 amps. I think it's 2.1 watts. Uh, works out to about 45 amps, I believe. Amp five, 45 amp burst current. Uh, not bad little, not a bad little unit. Yeah, uh, just make sure it all sounds good. Uh, these are, this is the hard case LiPo that they were talking about in the box. It already comes within the car. Uh, as far as I know, American, uh, the American market does not have this ability to be able to store LiPos within the car. I think they have to be sold separately or something. I might be wrong. Please feel free to correct me in the bottom. But this is a very nice, actually, feeling little LiPo. Uh, good way to get you started to the hobby. Um, we'll show you how to rig that up. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with these um, lipos, moving on to the car. Okay, you have a rear send, a rear, uh, rear mounted center diff, which is back here. I know that sounds confusing, but some cars have it in the middle up here. Some cars have it back here. So I've even seen some cars have it up the front. I don't know um, why they have it up there, but um, I think it's mostly the drift cars, the and the belt driven things. Um, aluminium drive shaft right out of the box. Uh, there's the slipper clutch in there, if you can see that, that little... If I can zoom in for you. Try and get it in the light. There. That little thing there is the nut for the slipper mechanism. Uh, quite a nice little unit, in all honesty. Uh, it looks like it will work well. Um, quite a nice little, quite a nice little car. Perfect for a first day, a first birthday present for someone who's already in the RC hobby. Um, I would not suggest this for a first timer because it is lipo. The li these lipos are a bit finicky to charge, and you know they if they if it's their first car, they do not need to be going very fast because perhaps uh, have them in on the brushed version of this first because there is a brushed version of this I think they have just released a 2.0 where they've re-rigged the radio uh, to a new unit and I think they've also redone the body as well so yeah so I think that's all they've done but only minor things uh, what else is there on here it's four wheel drive of course I already mentioned that suspension all the way around independence a uh, little three-phase uh, synchronous brushless motor, uh, 2950, it's a four-pole, four-pole brushless, I'm trying to read on the end what it is. Uh, I think I read on the product description that it was a 2950, so this thing is a torque monster. Uh, generally, with the way the brushless motors work, the lower the KV you go, the more torque that you have. Uh, basically, the KV rating is not to be confused with kilovolt. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it stands for, but I'm well aware that it means uh, the amount of rotations for every volt that's applied to it. So this is a 2950 KV motors, motor, so for every volt that's applied to it, it will spin uh, 2950 RPM. Um, so we have a 7. 4 volt LiPo here. I can't do the math right now. I'll um, put in the calculations in my head if you're uh, calculations down below if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, the LiPo also, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get you set up with this as well. So, but yeah, that's the uh, FTX Vantage, not the Carnage, that's the Monster Truck version. Um, I will be decorating it with little stickers. It actually looks pretty good as is. Um, and it, yeah, it's a perfect little, uh, perfect little car for someone who has been in the RC, the brushed RC side of it for a while and is looking to go a little bit faster. So yeah, let's get to the running, uh, running part. Uh, I failed miserably. Let's get to the running part. There you go. <laughs> you can tell I'm a noob at this. Okay, so setting up of the vehicle. Take the seat body cleaners out. Don't just forgive these, these are uh, cameras so you can get some onboard footage.
I'll set them up in just a moment. So setting up is very simple. Grab your two Dean's plugs, connector. I've already got my switched on, but you might need to switch it on. Done a bit of a naughty here. Always turn your uh, controller on first. <laughs> so uh, habits of old, C old RCs when uh, they used to run away from you when you didn't turn them on properly, which is fun. Go, click them down. Now I have run this a little bit as you can see. I have run this a little bit already just to get used to it. Right. Go. Jump time! It doesn't really jump too well on off road, but it's probably small. Not even three one battery. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> hmm. See if there's anything caught in it. See, this is the problem that they have with the uh, this bit. This bit here, but stuff can get in there and uh, wedge itself into the pinion, which is something I'm not a fan of, to be honest. Well, I wouldn't recommend doing that, but So one thing to keep in mind is the fact that this thing has a bit of a weird caveat with its reverse. So you need to stop it and then push the reverse button once again. Most cars you don't have to do that. This is only exclusive to the FTX Vantage as far as I know. But I could be wrong. So something to watch out for if you're thinking about getting one of these. So I'm not quite sure what the area over there is, but uh, it turns out this camera wasn't actually recording. 
So as you can see, it does have a little bit of trouble with the grass. Sort of, I don't know, short to medium long, short to medium grass maybe. Sort of in the middle. Hasn't been trimmed for about a week maybe. It does look kind of slow, but that's probably because it is, it's actually quite a big distance. There, so. See what the range is like. Just keeps going and going and going. In an open field, that is. Something you might have to be concerned with if you do live around a lot of trees. I can't even see it anymore on the camera, but it is over there. <laughs> 2.4 gigahertz systems working well there. Pretty much full throttle that entire time. The FPX Vantage. <laughs> Not a bad little machine, eh? I think this is a very good little, uh, good little runabout if you've been in the RC hobby for a while and want something a bit faster. Uh, the only reason it stopped is because low battery and the LiPo cutoff is cutting in, so. <laughs> Done well today. You've been through. You've well, I'll start with silt. I don't know what all this stuff is uh, down at the, the sort of sand pit. I don't actually know what this stuff is. Because it's not sand, it's too dense, but it's also not like not rocks or anything either. Because it gives under you, so I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm sure gave our uh, I'm sure gave our little uh, FTX a run for us, money. Oh. Don't get it in focus for you. I'm professional, really. <laughs> so yeah, FTX Vantage. Apart from the little uh, little hiccup at the beginning, where I think maybe a, just like a rock or maybe a, a stone got caught up in the uh, spur gear assembly, which is why I'm not really a fan of this open motor arrangement. Okay, you get more ventilation, but you also risk having things go come up and fly into your spur and pinion assembly and have them uh, jam up in there. So, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed the running video of this. Uh, stay tuned for my build series of it, where I'll actually end up putting all the upgrades on. Because <laughs> this thing, little thing deserves it. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed the video, I'm uh, happy to have lightened up your day. And hope it provides some sort of uh, insight for you. Uh, also hope that the uh, onboard cameras captured something nice as well. So. Hopefully you get a good idea of how fast this thing is. It's not too fast, but it's also not slow. It's faster than a faster than your traditional brushed uh, RC, but not quite as fast as the normal brushless is are. So this is it's a good entry level brushless, I'd say. Good entry level brushless. You get everything you need. You get the car that you can treat how you want. <laughs> In my case, poorly. Uh, you get a two cell lipo with it. You also get a charger, and you get a little lipo bag as well. Good little, uh, good little introduction to the brushless side of the electric RCs. So, yeah, happy you, uh, happy you like it, and uh, see you in the future. Stay tuned for the uh, build series. But it's not half an hour. Okay, so another quick one. Uh, so you have your LiPo charger. It seems that this one 
here, this is the LiPo charger, I plugged it in just to show you how you'd connect them. So if you're using the one right out of the box, uh, this is a two cell battery, so you'll notice it has three wires. So it has a negative and a positive for each of the cells. And on the bottom, on the back here, you'll notice that there's three ports, so it'll only go in one of them. Uh, this is a two cell LiPo, you want to put it in the two cell slot. I'm not telling you how to suck eggs, but uh, there are some people that would like to know this, so I'm including it anyway. Mm. So this is a balanced charger, so when it, uh, basically it has each of the cells uh, shown here, and when the, when the lights turn green, each cell is charged and you'll be ready to go. It charges currently at, okay, it charges 900 milliamp hour per cell, so you shouldn't be waiting around for too long. Uh, I mean, these LiPos usually come half charged out of the box, so, because it's a sort of, um, sort of requirements that you need to store them for, you need to have these half charged at least in order for them to, you know, if you're storing them and take them out and charge them once every six months or so. That's what I'm saying, these LiPos are a bit more maintenance intensive than thingies. Uh, I'm, I'm actually being a very naughty person here because I'm not using the LiPo bag. So basically all this works, literally it's just a bag that you put in there. Uh, it's just a bag that you literally slip in there, like that. Doesn't necessarily have to be all the way in but try and get it in as much as you can. So that LiPo is now contained. Or even just have it outside and then you can just close it up. Bit of a botched fashion, but <laughs> but I'm not gonna be using this charger anyway, so, you know, but this is, but that's basically how you'd uh, set up a balanced charger for these little LiPos. Technology has really come along since I was last uh, doing videos on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so. If you have one of these type of chargers, which are, I'm trying to remember the name of them now. Uh, if you have one of these rare types of chargers anyway, uh, just go to LiPo Battery, it'll have a program on there for it, they're, pretty, they're fairly popular. Uh, and I like to charge mine about half an amp. Uh, let's turn the capacity down, I think it was 39.50 or something. Uh, one moment. Mm. 32.50. So turn that down to 32, can't do uh, 50s on this, so just 33, yeah, uh, oh, 33, so 2S, then we move down to the starting current, I'm going to be charging this at half an amp, because I much prefer to charge the batteries slowly and have them last, rather than have them being charged quickly and then burn out faster. Just note that the, hard, the higher the current that you set, the the charger, the faster your battery will charge, but the shorter its life will be. So you just uh, press and hold start. It will check for you. It's a brand new LiPo, so it shouldn't have any issues. And that is now charging. Uh, over here, okay, don't worry about this uh, freaking spaghetti nest of... Uh, connectors here is just so I can charge any battery without having to interchange cables. Um, but the ones here is the Deans, uh, that goes into the main connection plug, and this one here goes into the balance plug, which is mo uh, only used for monitoring purposes on these uh, on these balance chargers. I think they're balance chargers anyway. I'm trying to find, I'm trying to look around on the name to try and find what it's called, but. <laughs> But anyway, so yeah, this is only used for monitoring, this is actually used for charging, I believe. So, yeah, that's a little uh, insight onto LiPo batteries, should you need them.